Hi folks, Dave with DBS Tech Talk. Today we're going to talk about the KZ ZS10X. I want to thank Linsol for sending these over for review. Do greatly appreciate it. Linsol, you rock. All right, so the KZ ZS10X, uh, you check out the links down below for where you can purchase them and also for gear that was used in the review process and also for um, ways that you can contact me or to support the channel all kinds of links down there and while you're down there don't forget to like comment and subscribe kz zs 10 x they are 12 ohms 107 decibels of sensitivity have a excuse me a, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 40 kilohertz uh, you'll find out why i'm laughing about the 40 kilohertz thing also uh, they have one balanced armature and one dynamic. The dynamic handles the base and lower mids, and then the BA handles the mids proper all the way up through the treble. The inside the box, you get your IEMs, a cable, and three sets of tips, small, medium, and large Starline tips. Nothing spectacular. I did stick with the stock tips. I did not change out to third-party tips. The ZS TXs themselves are a pretty normal universal um, budget look to them. They have a purple and blue. There's also a couple other different colors available. A little bit of branding says the ZSTX on there. Overall, I don't find them to be bad looking and I find them to be very comf comfortable. The fit and design of them is very good. And the quality of the build is decent for $20. Actually, I, I have seen some more expensive stuff that doesn't feel as nice as these. You can see the drivers inside there through the shell. Overall, I find them to be very well built. The cable is exceptional for KZ, especially at this price point. I really enjoy the cable. And uh, I would almost buy these just for the cable itself. It's a very nice cable. Does not really twist up on itself. Has an inline microphone and goes to a 3.5 they do connect via two pin all right so uh, with all that out of the way how do they sound uh, they are a v-shape if you watch my channel you listen to my reviews v-shape's not my favorite preferred signature but i don't find these to be offensive as far as a v-shape um, especially for twenty dollars bass <laughs> Bass is fun. Uh, bass is energetic. It's, it's big and boomy in the bottom end, especially sub bass. They are more sub bass prominent than mid bass prominent. So you get a nice thump and a kick down below. Um, in the mid bass, it's not quite as punchy as you would want. Um, I'm not sure that a sub that a that a bass head would be really content with these, just because the the bass is a little bit uneven and unbalanced um, throughout. It has more of a sub bass um, shelf than um, being a little more even. The details and clarity, they're all right. They're a little lacking. Um, they're not the most clean sounding and they're definitely not the most resolving sounding bass, but the details are there. You can kind of pick apart things a little bit, um, but I wouldn't really call these detail monster bass. The other issue is they do tend to kind of do one note sounds, especially on busier tracks. So if things get a little busy, everything will kind of lump together a little bit on the bass and it'll just kind of become a thumping sound instead of being more uh, detailed and, and able to determine um, what is what. But $20, I can live with that. Um, it's a fun bass sound. We're not looking for a detail, um, critical listening IEM here at 20 bucks. I'm just lo looking for something that plays music and is fun sounding and engaging. And these definitely do that in the bass. Mids. Mids, on the other hand, are very recessed, especially in the lowers. It's very thin sounding. Male vocals, especially um, lower register instruments also um, sound very distant. They sound thin and they just sound behind the mix and they, they don't sound as cohesive as the rest of the mix. Upper mids are a little more forward, can come across shouty on some tracks, um, but it's not a super aggressive, um, assertive shouty. 
Uh, I find it to be okay. It doesn't really bother me uh, unless I'm listening to a, a a track that's very prominent in the in the vocals. As far as uh, graininess and clarity, these these have that. Um, they're not the most clean sounding mid, but they're not offensive either. Again, we're talking twenty dollars here, and so I can live with the mids. That's just a little unbalanced. Uh, timbre is not natural at all sounding. Um, it has a little metallic sound to it, but it's not the worst offender that I've heard. Um, I've heard a lot more expensive IEMs that have worse timbre than these. But um, again, we're not looking for something to be critical listening on. We're just looking for something to be budget and that'll play some music while we're out and about. As far as the treble, the treble doesn't really exist after about 6K. There's pretty much a peak around from 4 to 6K and then it just drops. Um, there's not really any extension on these. Even though they claim 40 kilohertz, I don't hear anything remotely close to being beyond 6K. Um, there's, it's a little stuffy. It lacks air. And it lacks sparkle and energy up top. Uh, all the energy comes from the upper mids and that lower treble region. And then it's just kind of down from there. Um, things can sound kind of dull, especially cymbals and uh, brass instruments with a higher pitch. Um, woodwinds with a higher pitch, you know, they, they just sound dull and lifeless. Uh, they, they don't really have any energy up there. And then that kind of goes into the soundstage. The soundstage sounds very close and intimate. And a lot of their details and stuff are, are like right here. They don't really expand out. And that makes your soundstage sound a little lackluster, a little clumped and cluttered, especially on busier tracks. Um, I do not recommend the ZSTX for classical music at all. Your stage will sound like a jumbled mess. Um, these are better for rock and roll, uh, classic rock, uh, dance, EDM, electronic, that type of thing. Um, it doesn't really, pop is okay, um, but it doesn't really do very good with classical or acoustical music. In my opinion, the ZSTX is a decent budget, uh, friendly IEM. It, does some good things well. It never really offended me, but it never really excited me either. Uh, got my toes tapping on bass every now and then, but just never really did anything to say, wow, these are really good. In comparison, how do they sound to the K-Bear KS2? The KS2 has a little bit better defined bass, um, a little bit more balanced through the mids and the, and the sub bass. And then the treble has more air and better extension and has a little bit brighter tone but on the k bear the upper mids are a little bit more aggressive so uh, depending on what you like as far as in this price point the k bear may be one way to go if you if you want a little bit more airiness a little bit more shimmer and glare but if you want something a little bit more laid back uh, a little bit more compressed sound then the um, ztx may be the way to look the Gear that was used, these played on everything and everything under the sun when it came to portable. I did not use them on desktop at all. Uh, these are a portable unit, they're 20 bucks. Um, as far as dongles that were used, the X Duo Link, the Razer DAC Amp, the ADV Access Port Lite, they all sounded great on that and sounded good. They came straight out of a DAP, also out of the Sony uh, Walkman NWA105 and also out of my phone and they all sounded great um, did not have any problems powering them or anything of the sort so the kz ztx yeah they're all right uh, i recommend them for a budget don't expect anything natural don't expect anything neutral and don't expect to do any critical listening with them these are purely a fun iem that's a good beater for the gym walking around the house and doing chores um, using at work if you're afraid of things being stolen or broken, um, that type of thing. Nothing more, nothing less, 20 bucks. This has been Dave with DBS Tech Talk. Thank you for watching. 
and I'll catch you in the next video. Speaking of the next video, somewhere on the screen is a subscription link and notification bell. If you haven't already, check those off and then check out the links down below for where you can purchase the KZ ZS10X and all kinds of other stuff. Thanks. Have yourself a great day.